We are going to be making a number of different dishes that make up the most of sourdough. So if you've been thinking about what you can do with sourdough, then we're going to show you how. And together, today with me is Sebastian Gibrandt, one of the world's best chefs. It's true, it's true. And Sebastian's going to talk us through some, I guess, really, really fantastic, uh, diverse, different ways of using sourdough. We've actually got a three-course menu that we're going to uh, present just with sourdough. So please, tell us a little bit more about it. Uh, thank you, Tom, and thank you for having me. <clears throat> yeah, this is um, an easy way. The, the most food waste that we have is actually throwing away bread. So I want to showcase something that we could use from stale bread and do actually a variety of uh, a three-course menu. Super simple, and this is just like the basic ingredients. Uh, and of course, you can do it in, uh, in different varieties depending on what you have at home. So we're going to start with um, the first course is going to be a savory French toast. Uh, I have some crea cheese and some prosciutto and some Dijon mustard that we're going to do. I'm going to fry it in a batter with some balsamic uh, vinegar. Uh, like a main course, we're going to do a panzanella, so it's um, Italian uh, bread salad. We're going to do some uh, uh, crispy croutons from the bread with some tomatoes, onions, uh, cucumbers. Uh, and some capers and then we're gonna finish off with a super sweet and simple uh, French toast together with some cardamom some vanilla and we're gonna have some ice cream and some fresh berries so uh, yeah that's gonna be the the menu for today okay it sounds great and this sourdough this has been bought from a, a store right you haven't made it yourself this is something that you can you can find in regular stores yeah exactly so this is um, or from a, from a bakery okay. of course yep. Um, these ones are from my favorite bakery here in Stockholm, so I've had them, so as you can see I've already started on them and they're getting a little bit, bit hard, but that's why I'm going to showcase something to do with it so we don't just throw it away. So we're going to start with the panzanella and making some croutons out of, out of, the, of this bread. A panzanella, so it's Italian? It's Italian, <laughs> okay. and it's uh, like I said a bread salad. So what we're gonna make is just cutting down some um, of the bread into uh, chunks, some pieces. We're gonna then add, and if you want, you can also take the bread and just like uh, break it down, so we don't have these perfectly cut edges. So it's depending on what you want to use it for and how you wanna wanna serve it. I think it's quite nice, quite junk, uh, big, big chunks, because then we're gonna soak this in some some juice out of the tomatoes. Okay. So um, they might, they go quite stiff, but then we're gonna add and have these juices and some vinegar and olive oil. And how long have you had this bread um, at home? I think this is about four or five days old. Uh, so we've had it for a while, but still like you, you could actually preheat it as it is. And after a couple of days and still use it, it's almost gonna be as it's, it's uh, freshly baked. But now it's getting a little bit too stiff so and stale, so that's why we're doing um, some panzanella salad okay. with it instead. Great, so this is the AEG Home Cooking. We're today making a three-course meal using sourdough as our base for every single one of those courses. Uh, if you want to know what to do with sourdough, uh, if, like me, perhaps you thought it was only for a, a side or maybe a starter, you're definitely in the right place. And also, if you've got some questions, uh, for Sebastian, uh, you know, any sort of questions you have relating to how you would use sourdough, how you can make the most of it, then please don't hesitate to write in and we'll ask Sebastian on your behalf and get him to answer those questions. So, great. Okay, so started with uh, the bread and just uh, add a little bit, drizzle a little bit of olive oil and then toss it around so it's covered so we get it evenly roasted and uh, dried in the oven. So we're going to put this in a pan. Put it in the oven, 225 degrees, until it's like golden and crispy. And is there anything specific about the olive oil? Is it just regular oil you could find in a grocery store? I use uh, Novello oil, so it's oh. a little uh, oil with a lot of pepper, a little bit freshness, some green grass, and gets a little bit more flavors, especially for salads. But you could use uh, rapeseed oil or canola oil or peanut butter as uh, peanut oil as well, but. I think that the olive oil is, is the, the one to choose. Okay. I'm going to use the same bowl because we're still going to serve and mix and every, all the salad in this, 
uh, this bowl. I start with the uh, tomatoes. Just cut them in half. And these look like quite big tomatoes, right? Is that it's, important? It's not important. Like normally you do with beef tomatoes, but yeah. you can use the variety that you got or whatever, whatever you have in the supermarket or you've grown yourself. And then just like press it a little bit like this. So we get all the juice and the seeds out. So we're going to make like a vinaigrette out of this. And you keep that, right? You're not going to throw Then we it keep up. these okay. ones. I'm going to cut them down. So this is like the vinaigrette that's going to soak the bread later on. So just press it out. So we got all these nice tomato, tomato water and the seeds. So we got the acidity, the sweetness and the freshness from the, from the tomatoes. So it's quite a quite a simple. It's perfect as a now we're going to serve it as a, like a main course today, but you can have it as a as a side dish, serve it as a starter. The variety is endless on this one. And this is just like a normal like the regular ingredients. Okay. But you could choose whatever ingredients you have or you, you like if you have any sp specialties. And then we're going to add so we have the tomatoes. I'm going to add um, a little bit of red wine vinegar. Red wine vinegar. Okay. And a little bit more olive oil. And you seem just to be putting this in as you feel. There's no particular amounts you have to use? Or? Um, we have a recipe yeah. to make sure that you get the, the equal amount, but yeah. it's like you have to try it. Some people like more acidity, some people like more olive oil, more pepper, more salt. So it's it's kind of up to you to decide the flavors, but we've done a basic recipe. So if you follow that one, that will be more, will be really great. Okay. Was it, how, how old was this bread? This uh, bread was about four days old. So uh, a normal sourdough, it, you could uh, bread, you can have it for a couple of days yeah. and you can just toss it in the oven on pre uh, uh, on a high heat. So it's kind of uh, almost like it's freshly baked. But this one tended to be a little bit too stale, a little bit stiff, so we're going to do something with it. So that's why we're going to break it down and make this bread salad out of it. Okay, so this is the AEG Home Cooking, and today we are making a three-course meal with sourdough as the key ingredient. So if, like me, you had some sourdough at home and you thought, oh, I could use that perhaps just as a, a side or as a, a starter, then uh, you're in the right place because already I've learned that you can use sourdough as a key ingredient for three courses. So uh, I'm really excited to see what Sebastian's going to serve to us and, of course, try it. So where are you at the moment? What are you doing at the moment? I'm at the panzanella salad. So I've um, squeezed out all, all the juices and the seeds from the tomatoes. Uh, I've, got add, I've added a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, and uh, grated uh, garlic. And then we uh, add the tomatoes, we cut them down, we added some cucumbers, and now we're going to add a little bit of, uh, of, of onion as well. Okay, and the great thing about this is that Sebastian made the vinaigrette in the same bowl that you'll be serving, right? So you're not using different bowls and it saves on the washing up. Exactly, we're going to do everything in. Once we're like going to toss this around a little bit and just adding all these uh, wonderful ingredients. We let the, the vegetables now soak in a little, little bit and then we're going to add the bread. So the bread is going to be soaked and gets all these flavors from, um, from, the, um, from the juice that we got in here. And how long do you let it soak? We're going to let it soak for about 10 minutes okay. or even more. So it's, you can do it quite in advance. Going to add some uh, sardines, some capers. Is this the sort of dish that I could prepare even the day before, or is it, it requires a bit more of an immediate uh, enjoyment? Um, you could prepare it, so you could yeah. do the vinaigrette the day before and leave it in a jar. And then you can have the bowl already made with all these vegetables. Yeah. And you have the croutons from the bread already, so then you just mix it together, so it goes quite fast. Okay. So this is the AG Home Cooking. We're learning how to make the most out of sourdough. Uh, we know that sourdough is popular. We look at uh, search trends around the world to see what people are looking for, what they want help with. And that's the whole point with this show, is to help people at home with uh, ingredients that you'll be familiar with and try and get the most out of it. And Sebastian, one of the best chefs in the world, is showing how to simply do that. So you've just taken the bread out of the oven, right? Exactly. Yeah. So you just uh, left it for uh, 10 minutes in the oven. And what temperature was it? Uh, 225. So we get this 
golden and crispy edge so you kind of it almost like it's it's brand new again so you can see these pieces so it's quite crunchy okay and then we're just going to add it to the to the salad mix it around a little bit with the, with the flavors and did you put anything on the bread i mean is there any oil on it or you just put it in the uh, oil? just a little bit of olive oil okay. and then toss it with uh, a little bit of salt and then kind of just mix it together so the bread is gonna soak in this awesome liquid that we have in the bottom so to stir it around a little bit and then we're gonna leave this one for to soak while we're doing all the other stuff so kind of just make sure that you get this all the flavors from from the the, the, um, the how do you say it? vinaigrette the, the vinaigrette yeah, yeah in the bottom of the of the plate and just kind of get it all over the bread so it soaks in all these amazing flavors looks like a lot of fun <laughs> okay so we kind of have the panzanella the bread salad it's uh, already made we're gonna leave that one to rest a little bit so that's the starter you could use it as a, a side dish a, a starter main course so the varieties it's quite big so in total that took what five minutes i would say it took about 10 minutes okay. 10 to 15 minutes to just do that one. And now it's gonna soak. So we're gonna start with the next thing. We're gonna start with the starter. So I'm gonna take this bread. We're gonna cut it. So we're gonna use this for both the starter and for the dessert. And again, same question to you. How old is this bread? It's uh, it's about the same. It's a little bit, I think this is one day uh, less, so three days about, I've okay. had it at home. We just cut it in smaller, thinner pieces. And we're gonna cut one bigger one. So these are a little bit thinner, about well, like one and a half centimeters. And we're gonna do one with about two. So we're gonna leave that one for making the dessert later. Just add these ones here. So three slices and you're gonna get two uh, courses out of this. Two courses out yeah. of it. Okay. So we're gonna start with the savory one. So we have cream. And then we add some uh, balsamic vinegar. Salt. Pepper. And then we're gonna add three eggs. Is there anything special about these eggs? These are free range? Uh, free range yeah. uh, eggs. So uh, more flavor, they've... Um, more intensity, it's uh, more golden, so yeah, free range is the ecological ones, is the one that I choose, prefer to choose. Yeah. Okay, so super simple, just mix this together. Make sure that it's uh, all mixed together well. How long does that take? Uh, it takes about 15 seconds. Okay. So just kind of beat it beat it together so it's like one smooth uh, batter we're actually going to leave the other one bowl here for the dessert we're going to take one of these and then we're just going to pour it in this so this is a secret trip secret uh, trick we add just a little bit so we cover the base because we don't want the batter to soak too much of the um, of the bread we just want to have it on the outside so we get this gold and it gets a little bit soaked but not like super smushy. So it needs to still have the crisp and the perfect fillings that we're gonna use. Okay, so this is the AEG Home Cooking and today we're learning how to make the most out of sourdough bread. We have a three course offer today. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and if you have any questions for Sebastian, uh, he's one of the best chefs uh, in the world. It's true, he's uh, been cooking at the Bacchus door. Uh, he's already supported uh, the Nobel Prize ceremony dinner. If you have any questions for him about what you want to do or could do with some uh, leftover bread, then please don't hesitate to write into the comments field and we'll uh, pass those uh, questions on to Sebastian. So where are we at the moment? Okay, so I've taken the, the two thinner slices, just uh, spread it out a little bit of uh, dish and mustard. And you could actually use whatever mus uh, mustard you like or prefer. So it's, uh, it's, it's your choice. It's just like the, I always have a, a can of Dijon mustard at home. We grate a little bit of cheese. The same here, I have Gruyere, but you can choose whatever you want. Okay, 
So this is a, a French, the French toast, right? The, the savory, the savory version. Okay. So just quite a lot of cheese. You know, like this. And then we have some prosciutto. Just put one slice in the middle. We, ha we have a question from Christopher. Uh, would it work as well with a lactose-free alternative? Yeah, of oh. course. You could um, you could choose like the fillings. You could do whatever you want. So these are just like the the basic um, ingredients that we normally use in a French toast. But you could add so many varieties and so many fillings into this one. So it doesn't necessarily have to be with cheese. Okay. And then we just like press it together a little bit. We let it just soak in for a while, so it sticks a little bit. And make sure that we have a clean cutting board, as clean as possible. And then we're gonna put the, um, the pan on, uh, medium heat. Exciting. With some, bu <laughs> with some butter. Yeah. Could you use oil, or do you have to use butter? You can use uh, oil as well, but okay. you get a little bit of better caramelization when you uh, use um, uh, butter. Yeah. But you have to be careful so it doesn't get burned, because it's much easier than if you would have had, had oil. Right. Just let it melt a little bit. Increase it a little bit. So I have 10 out of 14 now. Make sure it's melted here. And so just, Christopher, thank you so much for your question. Uh, great. If you also have a, a question you'd like to ask Sebastian, please don't hesitate. Um, please write it in the comments field. And today we're looking at how to make the most out of some sourdough bread. Perhaps you have some left hanging around in your cupboards. You're not quite sure what to do with it. We're presenting uh, three courses today that use up uh, bread that's three, four days old. And there's already a lot of variety on offer here, using the bread as the base. Uh, we're having a starter, a main, and a dessert. Uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to trying it. I have to say it smells fantastic. Um, the vinaigrette uh, is just stood in front of me with this uh, toasted bread. I'm really looking forward to trying it. And so now we are melting butter because what's happening next? Because now we're going to start with uh, frying the savory toast. So we just make sure that the butter starts getting melted. Turn it down, down a little bit, so medium heat. And then just like press the sandwich a little bit like this, firmly. And then we're just gonna dip it into this, um, we're gonna dip it into the batter. So it's uh, cream, balsamic vinegar, and just quite fast, so we don't soak it too much. So dip it, just leave it to rest a little bit, dip the other side, and then just like let it go off. And then we add it to the, to the pan. And then we're going to fry it to get nice colors on, the, on both sides. About like two minutes on uh, medium on one side and then we turn it around. So we're going to make the, start making the, the sweet one as well. Okay. So this is the AEG Home Cooking and today we're looking at making the most out of sourdough. And why do you think that sourdough is so popular? We can see that then search uh, for recipes around the world, people are looking at what to do with sourdough or... or no, even how to make it. Why do you think it's so popular? I think it's because of the flavor. The flavor is such a depth. I remember the first time I've ever had sourdough. It was in a restaurant in uh, Copenhagen in Denmark. And they explained it as sourdough. And I've heard about it before, but that was the first time I got this explosion of flavors, the depth, the amino acid, the sourness, the richness. Yeah, the flavor was something out of this world. And I think that it's kind of... Now it's a tool to measure, like people are saying, like, how's your sourdough and where did, where's your uh, favorite sourdough bakery? So it's kind of evolved into a, yeah, a way, way to live and everybody has their secret uh, bakery. So it's, yeah, the flavors, of course. For me, it's, it's nothing compared to uh, processed uh, bread. It's, it's like having a Fiat and a Ferrari. So it's two different worlds. A Fiat and a Ferrari. Wow, okay, that's quite a... Quite a comparison. But it's easy to understand. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's healthier too, right? It's much healthier yeah. uh, because you use the whole grain. So you, have, you don't have this processed yeast or anything. It's like it's uh, fermented by itself. 
So we have used the whole thing. So we have the amino acids, the vitamins, the fibers, and everything is still intact and packed in the bread. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I actually have another question. So this is from Daniel. Uh, Daniel in the UK. Will these recipes work with different types of sourdough, like a rye sourdough, or would that be too strong? It will de definitely work. So it's depending on what, uh, I would say, what type of fillings you have. But I think a rye bread has this amazing depth. It's quite nice, like with berries and the jam. So you have the acidity and the, the richness to guide it with the jam, the sweetness, you have freshness, and then you have the, like the vanilla ice cream with the fattiness and stuff. It goes very well together. And it would work with the French toast as well? Not with that one, no. but we're going to make a sweet version now. Okay, so, so, so the rye is better for sweet? Right, you can have it for both. Okay. You, oh, you can have it for, um, I thought you meant like the ice cream and everything for this one. No. No, no, no. <laughs> you could use the rye bread for okay. both the French toast, the savory and the sweet okay, one. Great. But I would prefer it for the, the savory one. Okay. So yes, but the savory one is perhaps better. I would say okay. so. I was I just going to check it a little bit, it needs a little bit more time, increase that. And how do you know it needed more time? What did you see? There? I just checked the colors. Okay. It's very important to see you get the caramelization. That's why we added the balsamic uh, vinegar to make sure that we get a nice and uh, nice caramelization. So almost like it's go dark, but it's not burnt. Okay. So it's a different different way. And I, I can smell the butter here, and it's very tempting. I want to dive in already, but I will hold back. And we'll leave it. So that's why. <laughs> so we're going to showcase that we can do one thing, and then we do this dessert at the same time. Yeah. So eggs. We have some freshly ground uh, cardamom. We have a vanilla pod. We're gonna just have cut it to just scrape off the the seeds. And could I use vanilla essence if I had it in a bottle? It it, it works absolutely, yeah. but it's it's uh, the, still the flavors of the the real vanilla is the one to get. And then you could save this one and make your own vanilla sugar, and then you could add that one for the next time. Okay, so maybe we look at vanilla sugar the next time. That sounds awesome. I think so. So yeah. we have a little bit of sugar. A little bit of salt, cardamom, vanilla seeds, eggs, and then we're going to add a little bit of milk. Okay. And this is the dessert. This is the dessert. So I don't lose track. Exactly. This so. is the dessert version. One, two, three. Okay. So as you can see, it's like quite a lot, but we can use it for, uh, for later purposes. Now we're just going to make one version, then we're going to create for all of us. So uh, just add the same way as the savory one. You can add a little bit more into the, the dessert one because you want this sweetness and the vanilla to really soak in into this one compared to the savory one. I'm going to check this one again. Okay, almost there. And what you're looking for here is that the bread is toasted. It should be toasted yeah. and it almost, when you have the balsamic vinegar, vinegar, needs to be a little bit more dark and darker than golden. So, but just make sure that it's not burned, but, but because of the caramelization of the balsamic vinegar, it's going to yeah. get a little bit darker than golden. And we can show that when it's finished. So uh, keep on watching if you want to see how that looks. We're going to turn it around now. Maybe okay. we can show it now. Just get the perfect angle. So you can see here now. It's golden in the edges up here, but it's a little bit darker here. So that's what we're aiming for, and that's why we have the balsamic vinegar. How long was that? That was, what, like six minutes, seven minutes? Yeah, it took a little bit. So it's depending on what temperature you have. So you yeah. need to know your hob and exactly what temperature to, to fry it on. But it's better to be safe, to do it at a lower temperature, and then just add. Okay. So we're working on an induction hob and it has a maximum power setting of 14 and we're right in the middle of it. Um, so yeah, I guess that means that you're also able to keep an eye on it, make sure that you're not burning it. So not too high, not too low, bang in the middle for seven, eight minutes either side. Okay, so that one, we're gonna finish that one off and then we're actually gonna uh, fry the next one in, in the same, uh, same pan. We're gonna do a three course menu quite, quite fast in uh, one pan. So with these three courses, how much time do you need in total? Um, I would say like if, if I would have done it myself, about 20, 
30 minutes. 20 minutes. And when, so, okay, when you say by yourself, you mean not showing the people that are watching? Not yeah. exactly, and also like, we're gonna, you can process it and do it a little bit faster, but it's also no exactly, I would have done like, many of these things, I would have done the same time as I had the crumbles and the bread and the okay. same for this one. I would leave this one and start with the next thing. So right. we're gonna take it step by step to sh showcase it a little bit easier. Okay, so that one, done. It smells absolutely fantastic. That melted cheese and the butter together are oh, delicious. Uh, I, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to trying it. Yeah. We add a little bit more butter, and then we're going to do the. So you don't need, you don't need to wash the pan. No, okay. because you fried already fried in this one. Yeah. And if we don't have anything that's going to be excess from this one or any flavors. It's just going to be the bread. Okay. And it's going to get a little bit golden. So instead of throwing the butter away, we can still reuse it. Okay, so we cut this into half. So it's uh, perfectly melted, the cheese and the ham. Starter, we have the main, and now for the dessert. So as you can see, a little bit of thinner pieces, but now we have a thick piece, about two centimeters uh, thick. And the same thing that we did, just add it in the, the batter, but leave it a little bit so it soaks in. We want all these flavors to soak in. And is it important that it's that thick? I mean, that does seem quite thick. It is quite yeah. thick, but also like we allow it to soak in a lot of these uh, flavors from, from the batter. Okay. So we want all these juices soaked in, the vanilla, the cardamom, you could use cinnamon and the sugar. So we need that one to go into the bread before we fry it. So. And could I prepare this again the day before, keep it in the fridge? Is it possible to over-prepare it? Um, you can over-prepare it if you would have fried it. So right. I would say have the bread ready, the batter ready, so when you have the guest or you're going to serve it at home, yeah. uh, just put it in the batter, fry it, goes much faster because you're still going to reheat it, so it's going to be probably the same time than making it in the oven. So it's much nicer to just do it, have the batter all ready, the bread, so it's super simple. Okay. Okay, so while that one is frying, leave that one over here. We're gonna finish the salad. Make sure, just bring it over. Just take a little bit of uh, uh, basilica, basil, and just like break it down into pieces. So quite rustic. Black pepper, a little bit more of olive oil, and then we're gonna just with a peeler and a parmesan cheese, a little bit of bigger chunks like this. Okay, so we're near. You're finishing off the first dish out of the three course menu that we're using for sourdough. And what was the name of this starter again? This is a panzanella salad, so it's okay. a bread, Tuscan bread salad. And you could also have that as a side, it doesn't have to be the, the starter dish. Right? No, exactly. Could okay. be, it could be a starter, it could be a side, uh, and just as it is. So we have a starter made, French toast with uh, dish and mustard, uh, prosciutto, the bread salad, and we're going to add the sweet uh, French toast. Okay. So this is the AEG home cooking. We're coming towards the end of uh, multiple uses for sourdough bread. So if you wonder what to do with your sourdough, there's three options here, three alternatives you can try at home, or uh, perhaps you want to try your own. So if you have any thoughts on what you would have on a French toast, please write in the comments field, let us know. Uh, also, if you have any questions for Sebastian, uh, please write those into the comments field and we can pass them on. And uh, yeah, tell us what's next. <laughs> okay, next up is the, um, the sweet uh, French toast. So we have the butter, so you just want to make sure that it, it's get golden. Just add a temperature a little bit. And what we're going to serve this one on, so just like fry it on both sides. I see the temperature here is a little bit high. Is that because the bread is thicker? Uh, no, it's just like now I have the time to make sure that I could check it. Okay. So the other one I had on lower temperature so I can do other stuff at the same time. To so make sure is that we don't burn the bread.
but now I actually can focus in because the first dish is the starter, the main course is already done. So all my focus is gonna be on this piece of bread. So just make sure I don't burn it now because then I will be a little bit embarrassed. <laughs> but is that how you work in a professional kitchen? Yeah. If you've got lots of different things going on at the same time, you've kind of reduced the heat on something just to keep it ticking, but making sure it doesn't get too cooked. Yeah, but exactly. Yeah. And that's where I have the, the inductions as well. Like you can have something on heat, you have it on, on one, so you still like, it's, it's still warm while you're gonna serve. And also the oven, we use it as a, we could put like if it would have been a warm salad or something, we could have it in the oven. So everything goes together at once. So kind of reduce the temperatures to make sure that everything's ready at once. You're a bit like a conductor for an orchestra. Kind in of. A way. Yeah. Kind of. So just a little bit more color in this one. But we're getting there. And this is, what are you serving this with? Was this was with the fruit? Uh, it's just going to be uh, blueberry jam, some fresh berries, and vanilla ice cream, and icing sugar. So it's... <sighs> Sounds great. <laughs> and what you can do is like when you fry this one, it's like you can turn it around a little bit, move it from side to side, because while you're frying something, the same with meat and everything, if you put it on one side, the temperature goes down. So kind of change like from the right side, if we turn it around now, leave oh, yeah. it on the left side because now it's preheated on this side. Yeah. This have a time to go up in temperature again, so then we're just gonna put it on the other side. So you're swapping the side of the pan. Swapping the side, making sure that we have the perfect temperature. So, okay. Okay, so we're gonna leave it here. I'm gonna bump it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna take out the ice cream, make sure that it's uh, perfectly temperatured a little bit before we're gonna serve it, and then just gonna finishing these, this one up and uh, serving the three course menu. Okay, so we have two dishes of the three course menu finished. So we have an Italian salad with uh, the bread that came out of the oven and you made a vinaigrette. And yeah, then again, this smells really, really nice with all of those different flavors that you made with the vinaigrette. Uh, the toasted bread, it looks really, really fantastic and appetizing. And Thank you. you could have this as a, a starter or as a side if you're entertaining um, some guests. Um, also, we have the French toast, which had some gruyere cheese in it and uh, some prosciutto. I mean, that, that smells absolutely fantastic. A third of the three courses, which is um, a sweet dish. Right? A sweet, uh, yeah. sweet French toast. So it's uh, soaked in a batter of uh, milk, eggs, cardamom, and some vanilla. A little bit of salt to get it a little bit savory as well. You have the savoriness from the, the bread as well, but just want to add a little bit because I think a lot of desserts actually evolves and gets even better just like with a pinch of salt, because salt is a flavor in enhancer or in yeah. increaser. So yeah. that's why. Okay. Um, so we just have the um, the bread, just a big toss of um, blueberry jam <laughs> with some cardamom. And then we just have a little bit of ice cream and that's gonna melt down. So it's just gonna add a top. And I love this. You have the warm and you have the cold ice cream. It's gonna melt like the textures and the combination warm and cold. That's something to look for in a dessert. That's like my favorite. And like, with the salt. And with salt. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is just like add some fresh berries. Just toss them on. vanilla ice cream and a little bit of salt and then just like and what's that icing sugar icing sugar okay okay done so we have a three course menu you know just a couple of minutes so it's uh and everything's made out of stale bread we have the uh, savory french toast with gruyere cheese and prosciutto the tuscan bread salad panzanella with some uh, tomato, it was olives, uh, basil, parmesan cheese, and a perfect vinaigrette. And then uh, to finish it off, a dessert out of uh, French toast, sweet one with cardamom and vanilla, uh, blueberry jam, and ice cream, vanilla, and some berries. So warm and cold dessert on the end. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have to try it. You this have one. To try it. It looks like I should try the one that's melting. First. I would start with uh, the melting one. Yeah. So you get the flavors and the, also the textures and uh, 
uh, temperature uh, between the warm and the cold. Okay, and knife and fork is okay? Knife and fork is okay. Okay. So make sure that you get uh, a piece of everything. That ice cream is melting, so that's why I went to this. I would normally hold back, but, you know, make the most of it. So, okay. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Mm. Fantastic. The mix with the texture, again the crunchiness of the toast, the softness of the ice cream, the perfect blend, and as you say with that salt, it's fantastic. I really love it. And the great thing about this, it doesn't seem very difficult to do. And all of those flavors, especially the cardamom, is coming through as well. It looks relative, I wouldn't say simple, but the amount of different tastes that you get from it, um, yeah, you have to taste it to believe it. It's wonderful, thank you so much. I'm yeah. gonna try this one at home as well. Yeah, but it's super simple. Yeah. Using uh, an old bread that you normally mm. throw away and do something that's like beyond uh, this world. It's like so amazing. This is my favorite dessert all time. And it's, like you said, so simple and so tasty. All right, well, Sebastian, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Thank you very much. Um, so today we've seen how to use up uh, sourdough that perhaps you might not have um, thought about keeping in three different ways. I'm definitely going to try some of this at home. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and uh, we'll be back uh, next week with uh, another edition of the AG Home Cooking. So thanks so much. Take care. Thank you very much. You